Okay, let's start by looking at the pieces we're going to be examining in this example. First up is the Earth's crust, which is made up of the Earth's tectonic plates. We will be looking at three plates in this example, the North American plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, and the Pacific Plate. And then there's the Earth's mantle, an area that lies just beneath the Earth's crust. On the Earth's surface, this material is called lava and is liquid because it is so hot. But below the Earth's crust, incredibly high pressure keeps this material in a kind of semi-solid state, so it moves like very thick peanut butter wood. So we have the North American Plate, the Juan de Fuca Plate, the Pacific Plate, and the Earth's Mantle. This process begins with mantle material welling up due to convection. The upwelling of mantle material pushes up in between the plates. This pushes the plates apart. This mantle material that reaches the sea floor becomes new plate material. In our case here, the Juan de Fuca plate moves to the east and the Pacific plate moves to the west. Megathrust earthquakes can only occur in places where a plate is pushed under another plate. This process is called subduction. Earthquakes that occur because of this process are the only known earthquake type we know of that can cause a 9.0 or greater earthquake. It is because of this that most megathrust earthquakes cause large tsunamis. Here we have the Juan de Fuca plate being subducted under the North American plate. As it subducts under the North American plate, it causes the lip of the North American plate to get pulled back. The motion continues until the two plates get stuck. Pressures build up until the plates slip. This is the earthquake. In this case, the lip of the North American plate will flip back up as the pressure is released. It is this flipping back up of the plate that pushes the water above it up, causing a tsunami. 